Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the People's Choice Podcast, episode 32. I'm here with the lovely author, Jamaica. Please welcome her to the show. So I'll give me a clap real quick. Hey, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm here, chilling, you know? Oh, I understand that completely. So I always just, you know, start off with a small introduction. You want to introduce yourself to my peeps and my new viewers that will be joining us here. I'm Jamaica, by the way. I'm the author of um, Last of a Darn Breed 1, Last of a Darn Breed 2, Blood Saints of a Child 1, 2, and 3, Late on 1 and 2. And I'm just just me. Yeah, there we go. So where are you from? I was born and raised in Jamaica, West Indies. Okay. And what was that like growing up there? Growing up, I kind of... It's different. It's way different than it is here in America. Like for real, like, cause I was raised in a farm. Like my grandparents raised me, my dad parents raised me. My grandfather will be 101 in December and my grandma just turned 99. Congrats. Congrats. Yes, thank you. Blessings. Definitely. So when did you realize you wanted to become an author? Whew. Long story <laughs> short, we're gonna fast forward a whole lot cause I'm pretty sure we're well, gonna we don't come back. To. Well, I was like, we don't have to. We could go the long road. I love the journey. I love the journey. Love the journey. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got incarcerated on my second dope charge <laughs> and um, started writing. I started writing because the dude that wrote, that told on me, wrote me a letter asking me to forgive him. So I was so angry and hurt, like, you know, so I just started writing, pouring my feelings out and it's just been that ever since. Mm -hmm. So did you ever forgive him? Because I know forgiveness is a hard thing to do. Forgiveness is a hard thing to do. Um, some days I feel like yes. And then some days I feel like no. So mm -hmm. I'm not even quite sure for real, for real. But it's a stepping stone. You know, every mm -hmm. day is just a different day. Got to look at life in a different setting. You know, we all had a chance to tell. I choose not to. And it's just what it is, you know, but forgiven. Yeah. It's, I'm working on it. Yeah, it's not going to happen overnight. And Definitely I applaud not. you for just even acknowledging that. And like, you know what, I'm working on it. Because there's some people out here that won't even, they're just, no, hell. You know, or they're like, yeah, but you're like, you know, I'm working on it. I love the real. Yeah, I'm not perfect. Like, definitely, I'm not perfect. Like, no one, no one's perfect, you know? We all yeah. done have mistakes, made flaws, everything, you know? So mm -hmm. it's just, that's, that was just a hard one. Like, you know, that's like the worst one ever in my life. Like I actually had to went through, like, you know, if I don't know if you know, or if you've been in a situation where like, like you ride with somebody to the point and like, you feel like they're your dog and mm -hmm. you their dog. And then it's just like at the blink of an eye, it's just like, oh, I don't know that person no more. And in that situation, that was the case with him, you know, but it's mm -hmm. life. Definitely. And I I know exactly what you're talking about. Like it's it's a hard pill to swallow, but once you like I guess forgive is a great word, <laughs> you know, like we just talked about it. It's like what's that word? I mean, what's that quote? They always say, I forgive, I don't forget, something like that. Yeah. You know, I went through that because I've dealt with much portrayal in my life. But, you know, I just got to keep my mind focused that God got something else in store for me. And that's what keeps me going. Definitely. It makes us stronger, makes us better. Definitely. So what do you think was the hardest part about becoming an author? The hardest part of becoming an author was actually learning how to write from the heart or just writing just because you want to write. Mm -hmm. You know, and in my case, like, I can't relate to something if I haven't been through it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that was, like, the hardest thing because people was like, oh, don't say that. Like, I get a whole lot of backlash from it now because people are like, hey, 
you put that in a book, like you weren't supposed to put that in a book, but it's a part of my life. I feel like I could do whatever I want. It's my story. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I feel like it was just, it's just that basically people, a whole lot of people don't agree. And they're like, it's, you know, it's like you got the ones that salute you and then the haters. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, it's just what it is, but I really don't care. I'm at a point in my life. Like, I don't care what anyone thinks, you know, I'm just, I'm just me. Either you gonna love me or you gonna hate me. And if you hate me, I really don't care. Mm. You know, I, I went through that same thing, like access past September, because sometimes like we go through life just trying, like we don't even know it sometimes, but we try to really please a lot of different people and we put other people before ourselves. In front of us, yeah. Mm-hmm. And once you reach that point though, where you're like, you know what, you're gonna love me for me and I don't care, you know, if you hate me, you hate me, that's your problem. And after switching that to have that mentality, now I'm really enjoying life more. Like I found that joy and, you know, you're on your way to that too. Oh, I've been there, man. And since oh. they opened up them gates and there, I'm free. Oh, like that <laughs> stress me out. Like nothing. <laughs> True. And, and to touch back on, you know, I was talking about the hardest part and you're saying people telling you you shouldn't do this, that it's like, how are you going to tell someone? how to tell their story like that's crazy to me like i never understood exactly. that <laughs> yeah but you know how people are they're just people true that now you got six books out right is that right um last of the damn one two lay down on a two that's what's that four seven seven okay yes plus seven. i did a collab with all the people on the label and um, that one is called Come For Me Too. Okay. My section in it is um, The House That Pussy Destroyed. People mm-hmm. don't really know that, but I wrote that. Okay. So, um, <laughs> yeah. I'll make sure I, I try to put that in the video. <laughs> I, like, I like doing pop-ups and stuff, too. So <laughs> that's what's up. Yeah. So how long did it take you to write your first book? My first book, I actually wrote it in the county jail. And it didn't take me that long at all because I was on lockdown, you know, I was a federal inmate. So they kind of like took me off from the regular part. But um, it didn't take me, I want to say like two months. But with me traveling, like I had to go to one court, come back and moving back and forth. It was just kind of hard. But like when I got settled all together, it was probably like three months, like ex- like right when I got to the feds, I just got determined with it, you know, put it all together. And it was just like, bam, I self-published my very first book myself. Oh, well, congrats. congrats yes, on that. Thank you. That's, that's, that's big. Cause I know a lot of authors that there's one thing they, they sh- like stress about. It's like, Oh man, I gotta find a publisher. I gotta find a publisher. But you did, you know, yourself. That's amazing. Yeah. I did my first book because it was like kind of crazy. You know, my support system wasn't really, that in prison for referral, you know, when you get locked up, it's like out of sight, out of mind. Mm-hmm. Everybody said they're going to write. Ain't nobody really going to write. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it was just kind of crazy. So, yeah, I did that. And then I ended up getting signed with um, Lockdown Publications, Cash Presents. Awesome. Congrats on that, too. Yes. Thank you. So do you have a routine that you do, like, when you start writing or, like, do you, like, like music in the background, or I hear like some author, authors, um, they like to drink wine or, you know, smoke or something, then they start flowing. Do you have like a routine that you do or do you just like, I just write? For real, for real, for real, like I'm really hoodish. Like it's very hard to take me at times. You know, I feel <laughs> most time like, um, like I'm too gangster with it. But at the same time, I am a lady, you know, I kind of tone it down and stuff like that. But um, my music, yes, Boosie and Jeezy. Yes, faithfully. Right. Shout out to them. Yes, okay. my favorite authors, my favorite rappers, like, yeah, they're like, man, you don't even know, like, they kept me going inside themselves, like, it was crazy, but, um, yeah, like, that's all, when I write, that's what I'm listening to, like, yes. What's up? Yeah, I remember seeing your Instagram video before when you are showing your books and Jeezy was playing in the background, I'm like, yes, okay. Baby. Yeah. Drop a die, baby. <laughs> Tug yeah. motivation, like, you know, yeah, man, like, yeah. I'm definitely a diehard fan. Well, I do. <laughs> so, so do you have any uh, audio books that you plan on making or you just want to stick to physical copies? 
Well, eventually, sooner or later, we we'll probably venture out to that. You know, and I just came home, so I'm still on ankle monitor. So basically, I'm just kind of just figuring things out and everything together. And then, you know, I get off in September, so I'm like, hi. So I'm about to like, yeah, I'm about to do some major things. So yeah. I can't wait. And you know, I'm gonna be supporting you 100. percent And know, my peeps, man. you know, yes. all my viewers, they better go support you, or y'all not a real supporter of me, because <laughs> because <laughs> the author Jamaica has been supporting me since episode like at least what four, maybe five, something. And now look, yeah. 32, and and th- we've actually been talking about doing this interview for a while, and we're yes, finally here. <laughs> we're finally here. <laughs> yes, definitely. So. Uh, what has influenced you the most when it comes to writing your books now that you've done seven plus um, a co, uh, co-writing a book? What influenced you the most? My kids. My kids are my motivation. Like, like um, being gone, like my son was a baby. My daughter was only two, you know, like my daughter's 12 now. My son is 10. So it's just like everything that I do, like, I always think about them first before I think about anything, you know? And I just go in, like, they are my motivation. Like, they are everything. Like, they push me to go harder. They, You know? It's mm-hmm. just, like, that's all I got. So, but, yeah, them. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So, who is, like, some of your biggest supporters, like, that you've, like, because when you start a new career path, you know, some people you're going to have the haters or the doubters, but who's been like the most supportive that you said, Hey, I'm going to become a writer. I'm becoming an author. Man. I'm going to keep it real. Keep a hood. The yeah. streets, the streets going to love you regardless. If you've been in the streets and you've been 100% loyal to the streets, even though the streets may not be, might not have been loyal to you. It's still going to be a few like, yo, we definitely going to rock with you. You know, mm-hmm. you know, they say, Real niggas relate to real. It's just what it is, you know? And it's just like, Street's been like my number one supporting team, you know? And then you have those on the other side, like I'm not of the streets, but at the same time, like you've been so real, like I'm definitely gonna rock with you. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And that that definitely stands out with you because that's like when me and you start talking, you know, just, I love like your realness, you know, like you're as real as it comes and that sticks out with me. Because especially being where I'm, where I'm at currently, is a lot of fakes. <clears throat> not to not to diss where I'm, hey, where I'm living. I want to one thing about it. Though, let me just clear it up. It's not uh-huh. just fakes where you at. It's fakes everywhere. Like you'd be so surprised about who people are until mm-hmm. like Yo Gotti said this one thing. He said, when a person show you their color or an action the first time, take it because that's mm-hmm. who they are. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. who they are. Like, as Boosie say, trust nobody. You know what I'm saying? But mm. sometimes in life, we let that door open and to the point that we trust people. But at the same time, the same people that we trust, not always loving us back and be loyal to us, they be the same mm. ones that stab us. You know what I'm saying? But we learn from that, though. So it's like you all end up getting taller, stronger, to the point that you don't even want to trust nobody. You know what I'm saying? So Mm -hmm. it's just life, you know, you just got to live and learn and just don't make your mistakes. I have it. True that. That's, that's hundred percent true. And one thing I've learned is like about life, it's just balance. Like it's a big, big balance, you know, especially like coming from the street life. I mean, like you said, trust is like a big thing and it's hard though. It's hard to trust people. It's hard to trust, even like with my podcast, you know, like I have people reaching out with me. Oh, I want to do this. I want to be a partner with you. I'm like, this is my baby, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's hard for me to trust you with that. And that right. Like you created, you. you created this thing from the mud. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And as soon as you let somebody in and they see like you get in there, then that's when the jealousy starts. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So me personally, take the time. Like, I don't really need nobody. Like, as long as you got those that you do have and you know they're never going to cross you. You're good. You 100. I'm riding with you. Thank you. And I'm riding with you, too. I already know. (laughs) So here's a question I came up with that I just, I come up with some crazy questions sometimes. (laughs) So knowing that you're an author, I was like, okay, if you had the opportunity to live anywhere in the world for a year, 
while writing a book that took place in the same setting, where would you choose and why? That took place in the same state that I'm writing the book? Yeah, same state or same setting. Um, See, I'm good with this one. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't want to really say you're good with that. Like, oh, street, come on. <laughs> <laughs> the streets, like. It can be started, anywhere in the world. Anywhere. I started hustling in Lynchburg, Virginia. Like, that's like my home. Like, you know what I'm saying? Even though I was born and raised in Jamaica and I grew up in New York, Lynchburg mm -hmm. kind of just changed me. Like, like I was so timid, but now I'm so raw. It's just like whatever. So yeah, VA stand up the Berg, man. I love the Berg. Berg will always be my home. Like that's my home right here. So yeah, VA. Shout out to VA. <laughs> Shout out to the Lynchburg, Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> so what advice would you give to inspiring writers? Just don't give up. Like don't give up. Let motivation and determination just carry you. Like, doesn't matter. It may feel like you don't want to keep writing, but keep writing. Like, I try my best to, like, write at least two pages. I try. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. then there's nights when I could write, like, five chapters. You know what I'm saying? But I figure it like this. Like, if you could write a page a day, it's 30 days in a month. That's 30 pages. A book is like probably 220, 225. You know what I'm saying? So just imagine that, like, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, don't don't fall asleep on your dream. Like, it's your dream. It's your hope. It's your dedication that you put out there. That's what you're going to get back. So just aim for it. The sky is just a view. That's it. True that. So true. I love your answers, by the way. You're doing, you're doing a really good job. I know you said you had two interviews before, but... You're natural at this. <laughs> I'm so over you. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you see yourself in the future, God willing? In the future, God willing? Um, you know what, though? I used to always think about the future, like where do I see myself years from now, stuff like that. Now, mm -hmm. I'm just living day by day. I've learned to appreciate the simple things of life. Like I've never been a materialistic person, female anyway. Like I've never been into all that other stuff. One thing I do love is cars. Like I'm an old school, all the way to the core girl. You know what I'm saying? But it's the simple things for me, like the simple things. Looking outside of the stars, like, you know, just going for a walk, taking in the scenery, just enjoying life. So mm -hmm. years from now, not quite sure. I'm just living day by day, giving thanks. I'm alive because you know most people don't make it to even Amen. see another day or their age or you know it's crazy. So day by day for me. Amen to that. And you say you're a car person. What, what's your favorite type of car? Man, I had a 1973 Buick Centurion sitting on 26s. I'm thinking Ooh. like I was like the first girl to even do it in VA for real, for real. <laughs> <laughs> It was black, awesome. green, and yellow. I'm probably going to send you a picture of that too, so you can see you got, that. You got to. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it in the video. So, oh, so send, all my all right, send them all. Send them all. I got you. I definitely got you. I'm definitely doing that. All right. <laughs> but I got a few more questions I want to ask before we uh, wrap up here. So I've been asking these questions lately. These are like my staple questions. One is, what is a hidden talent that your friends, fans, or family may not even know about you? A hidden talent mm -hmm. that they don't even know about me. Like mm -hmm. I'm a beast in the kitchen. Like the kitchen right. is like. <laughs> what's what's your go-to meal that you that you know I can master at like that? Man, I can master anything. That's the thing about me though. Okay. I can master, master anything. Chef. Like, okay. Hey, I'm a master chef for real, for real. Like you put it there. Like I'm gonna put it together for you. Like I'm gonna give it to you. Like like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. I love to dance. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, this is that. So, Master Chef and dancing. All right. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up. I want baked macaroni and cheese. I want um some deep fried, like, chicken breast. And a couple, oh, some cornbread. Let me throw some other stuff. I know you can do it all. <laughs> I just want some good hey, stuff. Hey, <laughs> hey. You get my cooking, you might fall in love. We ain't going back. Hey, okay. <laughs> 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 So 
my next question, I ask this to all my um, all my guests. What is your favorite quote that you lean on, either during the good times or the bad times? Loyalty is a must. That before dishonor, in real, recognize real. I got three. So you say that one more time for me. Loyalty is a must. That before dishonor, in real, recognize real. Definitely. Definitely. I love those right there. Yes. So where can all my peeps and new viewers uh, find you on social media and find your books at? Um, you can find me at the Author Jamaica. You can hit the follow or send me a friend request. Like my friend request level going up. So like you going to get my 5,000 mark. We need to do something about that. <laughs> you got to create a second page. <laughs> right. Something like that. So um, yeah, but the Author Jamaica on um, Facebook, on IG, the author Jamaica, Snap, the author, the author Jamaica, or Julian J9815. And um, you can get your books from me or Amazon.com or Lockdown Publications. Awesome. I'll make sure I put that in the description and the video for all my viewers. Uh, is there anyone that you want to shout out before we wrap up? I just want to give thanks to. It's a whole lot of people like I want to shout out for real. Oh, go ahead. We got time. I, I got nothing to do that. <laughs> I dedicate all of my time right here to this interview. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you're so nice. Um, <laughs> God, for real, like God's been with me through it all. Like it's been nights when I ain't had nobody to mm -hmm. call on. You know what I'm saying? But it's like his telephone line is always open. You know what I'm saying? So, Amen. Yes, to my grandparents, they did a great job raising me, even though I turned out to be hell. <laughs> my daddy, like, I love my dad with all my heart. Like, my dad, man, my dad is, like, my best friend, you know what I'm saying? So, my dad, my kids, my kids are my heart. Like, I love them to me and to me, you know, hope they ever see this, you know, y'all my world, know that. Um. Just everybody for real. VA, New York. I'm in Maryland now. So I'm just here, you know. Um, you, of course. Like, I know we talked about this for for like months, right? Months, yeah. At least two or yeah. three months, yeah. I don't schedule like, what, twice? And <laughs> you up? Yeah, it's, it's all right. I know how it is. You know, I'm a very understanding person. Thank you. Thank you. Like you never once said like, nah, I ain't good. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. But, uh, yeah. Just thank you for just giving me a chance for real, for real. Open up your door. Arms wide open, you know, and then I done crawled wide in. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Definitely. I feel I always felt like you had a message that need to be out there. And if I could be that bridge to even like show it to people here in North Carolina or even to Dubai or Italy where people are starting to like really mess with the show hard, you know, I would love to be that bridge, you know? Yeah. All my friends, like y'all know who y'all are. Y'all like, y'all know the bond. Like I can't, it's like, you know, they say like this, like if you say one person name and you miss one, it's like you created an enemy for a lifetime. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So I'm just going to do it like this from A to Z. Your name is in there. Circle it. And my love is for you. If you're loyal to me, I'm definitely loyal to you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the author, Jamaica. Thank you for being a part of the People's Choice Podcast, episode 32. Uh, I can't wait to see what God has in store for you. I can see your future being extremely bright. You know you got my support, and my peeps is going to support you as well. Of course. Thank you, guys. I just want to tell you thank you again for just having me. It's been Nothing but a blessing, a pleasure, and I feel I feel at home. Hey, thank you. See, I always try to make my guests comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> nah. <laughs> Maybe we could do it again at like 62 or something. <laughs> Hey, you're always welcome on the show whenever you Man, want to come back. Thank you. Thank you. You don't even got to be an episode. We could just chop it up. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You know, I'm, I'm coming to Maryland and make sure I get some of that master chef skills. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, you come down here for a plate. <laughs> the look says it all. <laughs> all the Jamaica, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty.